Coming to you from the Hay Festival, we've just been looking at the DEC 2050 uh, energy calculator and we've got some questions that have been sent in about energy use, consumption, storage and what what route we might find to a, a greener, cleaner future. Uh, the question here for you is, what are the three biggest obstacles in the way of the UK going 100% clean energy? How do we overcome those obstacles? I think that's a great question. And I think I would start it by saying social acceptability is probably the, the hardest obstacle to overcome because whatever we do, it means a lot of change. It means changes in the sources of our power supply, which means we might have to accept some different infrastructure around our countryside, but it also means behavioural change in ourselves and how we use energy on a day-to-day -day basis as well. So change for all of us, sustaining that over a long period of time as being the number one thing I think that will make a big difference. You already said the word change, I think, three times, which will have been enough to turn many, many people off. You're change. A, you're a bad man. That's four <laughs> times now. We don't think about energy use today. We don't think about it at, at home very much. We turn on our light switch and we expect the energy to be there. Mm -hmm. And I think fundamentally, if we're going to get to zero carbon uh, as a way of living, we would have to just radically rethink that and en engage with energy in a completely mm -hmm. different way understand what we're using, why we're using it, when we're using it. It's, it's a tricky issue, this, because at the moment the thinking seems to be if people can't see it, it doesn't matter. You know, they can't see most of the carbon emissions, it doesn't really matter. They don't mind a wind farm provided it's not near them or anywhere they'd like to go on holiday. Yeah, we're living like kings and we're unaware of the amount of energy that's being produced and, and turned into useful forms on, on our behalf. Mm -hmm. But if you had to collect it at the shopping, uh, with your shopping at the supermarket every day, yeah. it, w it would be about uh, 30 kilograms of stuff you'd be having to cart uh, home uh, from. Is the that what it that, translates that, into? That, that's the weight okay. of the fossil fuels and the CO2 that's... Uh, uh, per person? Yeah, every day. Uh, it, it's... Yeah, that's a lot of wow. to milk. <laughs> Turn it off, kids. <laughs> so this person is, is asking the three biggest obstacles in the way of going 100% clean energy. So 100% clean energy, what are the options there? So onshore wind, offshore wind. Uh, yeah, so my, my answer to this question would be the, the choice that the, the Hay audience made had lots of wind and wave and loads of other things. Tidal which, barrage. Yeah, yeah. tidal power uh, and heat pumps and electric vehicles, building insulation, a lot of things which at today's prices are quite expensive. And so a barrier to getting there, and this is true for any pathway that achieves our 2050 targets, a barrier is it's actually a bit too expensive. Not everyone can, can afford these sort of things. Mm. So. What do we need? We need innovation support to drive the inventions and the breakthroughs that will drive down the cost of these technologies. I think a very short term one is, is probably financing and funding of these things. And, you know, there's a lot of debate continually in the press around the cost of energy. And the future is very uncertain, depending on you know, are fossil fuel prices going to go up or, you know, are nuclear power plants and solar panels expensive? We see this a lot in the press. And I think the initial inertia uh, in financial markets, getting over that, finding the money to come into this stuff, um, followed with the innovation, followed with the acceptability, that's what you need to really get this thing started. And once you've got that money coming in, getting it started, it stands a chance of, of keeping going. Let's assume, because you seem like smart gentlemen, that you have successfully identified the three major objects obstacles, what degree of confidence do you have that we will be able to overcome them? Well, we've got brilliant engineers in, in the UK, we've got fantastic universities, there's lots of smart inventors out there, and I'm confident that with continued innovation support, we will be able to get some breakthroughs and drive down the costs of the low-carbon kit. There we go, breakthroughs and driving the costs down. hope that's answered the question.